glorious morning here in the Eastern Cape of Southern Africa. If you if you hear children, whatever have records, I record. Well, I'm in a look what's called a location. We don't really call them towns. Well, some people say t a lot of people say townships, whatever. But we call them locations these days. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna do one today. This is a. Uh, Hmm. I made smoothies yesterday for the fellas because we have. Uh, I work with some young people, young men, and uh, every once in a while, maybe once a week, I make them a smoothies and blah blah blah. So I have leftover smoothie. I put it in the refrigerator, and now I'm drinking it now again, once again, have my smoothie. Okay, there's some stuff in the news these days. So I said. I, I've been wanting, I shouldn't have been wanting to do this, but um, as you may or may know, these, these, these series that I'm doing it has uh, things, of, things of my little existence on the planet. I'm trying to meld them into ADOS and just to, whatever. That's what my YouTube channel has morphed to. Okay, uh, let's start from the beginning. I was very, very lucky because, um, uh, let me put it this way, uh, when, I got out of the, when I was in the Air Force, actually my last year, or two years there, I... Um, I was doing a, I was, I was, what was last year? I was the poet in residence for uh, WPRB, the, the, um, the, I guess the college broadcast station at, at Princeton University. That's where I met uh, JB, the DJ of that thing. And then we'll go through that some other time. But that's where I first learned radio. When I say first learned radio. Now I would, since I was poet in residence, what we do, he do, it was a six and a half hour um, um, Saturday Soul. It was called Saturday Soul with JB. It was a six and a half hour program mainly all R&B, right? But what would happen, because of the nature of my poems, that they, he would, um, uh, when my time came up, six and a half hours, like maybe the fourth hour, whatever have you, he would slowly start taking the music to where they, it would meld in with, um, basically it was like jazz fusion of the day. You, you, know, you know what I mean? Uh, 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 um, you know, jazz fusion of the day. Uh, who, 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 who could we say? Um, I wanted to say, you know, like, like Grover Washington, things like that. It was like so a, a nice, smooth jazz kind of thing, not the not the bebop, not the whatever. He would put the music, he would slowly put the music so it would go into that, then we'd get the cut that I chose, and I would do a poem over that cut, then we'd go back out, and go back into Saturday Soul, but basically, so it was a nice transition. And I really, I learned about transitions then, I learned about um, this radio, and then I was there for a while, and then other people came, and we had a whole crew, we started to do skits, and then we had a grand time, right? Uh, then when I got out of the Air Force, and I went to um, uh, Livingston College, which is the college I graduated from, um, uh, um, of the in, in uh, part of Rutgers University in in, in, in New Jersey, past well, Livingston is Piscataway, New Jersey, but it's the New Brunswick area. I should say this. I said this before. Livingston College at the time, you have to think of it like this. Uh, uh, Rutgers had several campuses, several colleges, if you will. There's, there's Rutgers proper, that's the Ivy League, whatever. Then there was Douglas, the Women's College. It was Cook, the whatever college. And there was, there was, Mason. There was a bunch of colleges, and Livingston was one of them. But Livingston was like an HBCU. Think about it. In the middle of an Ivy League college, it was very interesting. You know, it was it was, it was like an HCP, HCP, historically black college, in the middle of an Ivy League, you know, university. It was an amazing experiment. They killed it off, but we won't get into that. <laughs> okay. So my may I had a double major. One was um, it was English literature, and and. Uh, well, but in English literature, it was like uh, my concentration in that was like black literature and also film studies, okay? Um, uh, and then also I was in communications, okay? And I won't get into that, but I was in communications. But some other thing happened, I had to be in communications like that. Um, but in communications, I didn't study radio. Well, I was really actually, uh, it's like a, I did video, we did, did video, TV production, a bunch of other stuff, you know, the theory and all the rest of that stuff, you know, uh, I like that. But um, it's important to note that uh, even then, I was really good at TV production and, and video editing. It was video, the old time video editing, you know, where you had the, the actual tape and ta -da, you had the, it doesn't matter. Um, but my radio, uh, what happened was I got a broadcast in, in Livingston College proper. We had a, a carrier current radio. The people was on that radio station. But I got my uh, FCC third class license, and I was over at the main at the at the um, Rutgers College campus, uh, the student center there where they had the um, WRSU. Uh, I was at the broadcast station, so I did a program called Variations of Blackness, and there I learned I learned a lot. I just, I mean, from from JB and 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 Saturday Soul, I got some some skills. But then doing that program, I got a lot of skills, you know, and then and editing and all this stuff. Okay, 
and production and just learn how to how to how to deal with certain things, interviews, all the rest of stuff. Okay, so I graduated from there, but when I was graduating, this was so, so amazing. This was amazing. When I was graduating, I was like the top of my of the communications department. Now, me and this other guy, this other guy, his name is Ron McGee. He was like the same profile, black guy, almost like the same height, same skin color, everything like that. The only difference is that he came from more of like a middle class background, and I came from a uh, came from the ghetto, uh, from the projects, you know, like that. Uh, you know. Um, and so anyway, Ron and I was graduating at the same time, and people would ask me because of our thing. And back then, this is like the, we're talking about the mid '70s. You know, people would say, "Oh, you're gonna be, you're gonna go to NBC, ABC, CBS," and uh, I say, "No, <laughs> I don't want to go." to They say, "Why not?" I always had glib answers. I said, "Cause I don't, you know, at some particular point, I you know I'd have to um, deal with the live. Uh, I, I would only be elevated to a level of mediocrity, right? So either they would have to get rid of me, or I'd have to jettison them. So why even go through that?" And by, let me tell you the real thing. That's what I said to people. But I wasn't really interested in communications because I was going back to theater because theater was what I started in, you know, I started in theater, professional theater, Negro Ensemble Company. So I want to go back to theater. Uh, so, and things happened and then I went to graduate school for playwriting and I was going back to theater. Okay. So, but what happened was Ron took the road that I could have taken. Right? He went to a smaller market, I forget where it was in the south or something like that. Met up with this white guy, right? the white guy got elevated and he and the white guy went to uh, San Francisco and Ron went with him because once you get these alliances, when it's like any like school, you get a good alliance or you can start a band in school and you'll stick together, whatever. So he went to San Francisco, then he went from San Francisco to New York. I think it was working for NBC. New York, that's the way it goes. You meet somebody and you, 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 you go like that. So Ron was in New York, and by that time, by the, all his journeys, my journeys, I was in New York. At that, when he got to New York, I was back in New York uh, dealing with uh, WBAI uh, radio and then doing what I do in community radio and learning more skills and stuff like that. <coughs> Remember, Ron, he, he was hard as a, as, a, as a tape editor. He was an editor, you know, splicing, whatever, which is an essential job. So, 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 so that's what we did. Um, so at some particular point, he just said, this ain't working. Because he could never, they couldn't, he's black, they, they would never, he could never go beyond whatever, that editing thing. So he quit. He ended up, ha we ended up hanging out at BAI together. We became an incredible team. Oh man, we did a, we did a program, let me say something else. We did a program called The Invisible Immigrant. I think it was like 86, something like that. Whenever the, 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 the 1776, the, the, it was the, uh, Bicentennial, whatever, of the uh, Statue of Liberty. So we did this program called the Invisible Immigrant. We, we, we talked about all immigration into the into the states. But it was a great program. I did it live on normal radio, so it was like my normal radio time was like three hours. So we did it like a three-hour program on Invisible Immigrant. But the program was so good that we ended up editing it down to be somebody. Another, the, I know the uh, public affairs because I'm in the arts department. The public affairs department wanted uh, it because it was what it was, and so we we edited it down to. Uh, or I edited it down to an hour program. Okay, we, we gave it to them. Then something else happened. I think the Austin part, somebody else wanted another verse, but they only have a half hour. So I had to edit it down to a half hour. So remember, I started a program with three hours. I edit, well, there's a lot of music in it, whatever. Then we edit, I edited it down to, uh, th uh, to from three hours to, to one hour. You think, oh, run hour version, whatever. You know, because when you get air time, you want, you want the most possible. And then edited it down to a, a half hour program. Through that experience, what we realized, what I realized, is that guess what? The half hour version was the best version. Yeah, I had to cut out my, you know, my, I had to, I had to cut out my, my Jimi Hendrix, you know, uh, uh, Star Spangled Band, but the long cuts, whatever. But it was really, and we had guests and stuff like that. So anyway, so, that, so that's what happened. So it taught me something, right? And you would never know because your, your instinct is like, hey, I want that, I want that. And I had to, I did it myself. It's not, it's not like somehow I was ordered to do it. Okay, self revelation. Okay, okay, all right. So here you go. So I ended up, you know, doing a lot of uh, uh, community work. And, uh, uh, I ended up just doing a lot of community radio. Now there's a difference when you do community. Well, let me let me jump to something else right now. I jump all the time. Bear with me on this. Around about the same time, uh, I, I noticed something. When I was at BAI, we, there was a microphone called uh, 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 635A, uh, uh, um, Electro Voice 635A. Right? It's a small, like, mic. if you look at old clips, the sports men always, if you see it, it put some of the sports uh, reporters, put some of the, about the 60s and the 70s, even into the 80s, you have this small mic, right? And 
Then when they, and, and so the sports people would use that a lot, right? Then what happened, they came out with another mic called an RE50, right? It was a, 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 a fatter mic with a, with, a, with, a, with a fatter head, right? And it, and, it, and it actually looked good on TV, better than the, the little mic. But what happened was the little mic, if you, if you just, um, you know, if, if you was nervous and you did like that, because of the technology of the day, that would be picked up somehow it'd be picked up on the, on the tape. So they got these mics for the TV people, the PP people, I don't know, nervous on TV, they would do that a lot, but this, 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 they had more padding in RE50, okay? So now, you know, courthouse steps, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, they just, uh, they just dragged Julian Assange out, blah, 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 that's what you do, okay. So then, so I noticed that happened first. So they made it comfortable for the TV people. Then what I noticed, maybe basically not in the 80s, more in the 90s or 2000s, they have what we call like good looking people on TV. If you look at the old broadcasters, like somebody like Walter Cronkite, they're not a good looking man, you know what I'm saying? Uh, forget about women, forget that. But now you notice, excuse me, I'm sniffing on because of this, man. change the season. So, but you have to understand that they didn't have women on a lot. Then when they did have women, it was women who were competent, actually usually behind the desk. But now when they said all these women, they like good looking, so-called, you know, by Western standards, really good looking, you know what I mean? You have the smaller markets, then they try to accommodate, you might have somebody that's not as good looking, but they never get promoted to, you understand what I'm saying? And then Fox came out with, you know, with the women with the short dresses where, where they can cross their legs and you know, somebody and the, and the dudes are looking for the upskirt shot, you know, that, that kind of thing. Okay, now, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to something. Then I'm gonna go back and s explain something. Uh, when I first heard Chuck Todd on TV, he was like out there on the field, whatever. Oh, he's doing some statistics, whatever that he was doing, right? And you know, and, and then I think Rachel Maddow, people like that would say, "Oh yeah, my friend," and all the rest of that stuff. Da, da, da. He had no credentials. He had no college degree. Never. He was just, you know just a guy, you know, actually not even a good looking guy. And now this same guy who had no experience and they, put, they kept on elevating, elevating, because somebody must have been his mentor. Remember, even uh, even Rachel Maddow got on because of Keith Oberman, you know, so, so he sort of mentored and she came through the um, uh, uh, Air America kind of situation. So, you know, so somebody has to pull you through. It has little to do with your skills. Don't get me wrong, there are people with what we call the it factor. You know, uh, in television they have a Q rating. So obviously Rachel Maddow and people like that have a Q rating that's very, very high. And they, they measure these kind of things. I mean, it factors like, a good person in it factor is like um, uh, Amy Gooden for Democracy Now. She has what's called the it factor at the particular point in radio. Don't worry about it. Okay. So, um, uh, so I end up uh, uh, looking at this stuff and say, wow, this is interesting. They have unqualified people, but they, they trap them with everything. And remember, all these people got people with in their ear, producers tell them what to do, they got a whole support team, you know, they don't really, they supposed to have research people, but they ask research people to do stuff, but but also everybody's in that produce everybody, so that if you're of a certain mentality, then you're going to do the research of that, you see, you're not going to go, you know, you, have, you say, hey, there's uh, some ADOS, you look around, there's nobody here, it's ADOS, how are we going to get into that, well, let's just, let's just do something, you know what I mean, you know, like that kind of thing, okay, so, mm. Okay, so we, we threw with that. You see, the, I'm trying to say a lot of people on in news right now, off, I'm not saying they're fake people, they're, they're not really qualified. They're not, they're, like they say in South Africa, we call it presenters. They're presenters. It's like one level below actors. That's what they are. They are not research people. They're, they're, they're not going to win the IF, you know, uh, 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 IF Stone Awards, you know, the Izzy. Oh, um, shout out to uh, Aaron Mate, who just won an Izzy. Good work on the Russia thing. You know. I'm shaking that. I know my Aaron Mate. Him, well, him doesn't remember me. I don't remember him, but you know, we worked in certain, 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 certain kind of circles. Um, okay. <clears throat> so that's interesting, you know. And plus, if you don't go through anything, any real journalistic things, then you don't have that kind of skills. Let me show you what I mean. I'm just going to be longer because I have to be clear with this. Um, say, for instance, um, I'm, um, because my ultimate position that I got at WBAI, which was an arts director. Arts director meant that I deal with drama and literature as well as as, as well as interviews, you know, on, and critics, whatever, but also I am the music director. 
of the radio station in New York. Now, being a music director of a community radio station or something like New York, a big station like uh, BAI, is different than being a music director of some other kind of station. Because if you're the music director of a classical station, then you know classical music is used again, program for classical music. You have made, uh, other proclivities, but you have to deal with prep classical music. The you the um, you know, director of a rock station, blah, blah, or, or R&B station, or, or a hip hop station, you have your, your, that's your lane. But when you're uh, a music director of a station, of a community station that has, you know, all that stuff, uh, classic, uh, blues, blah, blah, all these other, all these forms, that stuff is coming, you know, salsa, all, all that stuff is coming across your desk, so you're, you're Understanding of music and how to program is a little different than if you you understand. Okay, so your scope is a little different. <coughs> also, you, okay, and to show you what I mean, and because I was doing everything, uh, when I finally left and doing my travels I, a few years ago, from 2005, whatever, six, seven, whenever it was. Uh, for, anyway, for five years in Cape Town, I did a thing called uh, Pan African Space Station. The space Station. I'll do that. I'll go into that some other time. But in that thing, all my skills came to play. You know. They're dealing with all different kinds of music, because the programmers, all kinds of things come into play. And I was uniquely qualified for that position because of my background, not because of my looks or, you know, you see? And plus, sometimes I would interview people. And so all that stuff that I was, that, that, that built, it built up when I got here, got, got, got to Cape Town, and I do Pan-African Space, Space Station, it all came into play, okay? These folks, if you put them someplace else, it doesn't come into play. I'll give you a, a perfect example, and you and you and people go with what they know. One time at BAI, they at, at the national level, they they say, "Oh, we got to get professional here." They hired somebody that was that had worked for CBS. That was their bona fides, I guess. They were terrible because they didn't know the community radio situation. You see, they were terrible because when when they wanted to to, to solve a problem, they threw money at it, and that's not what you do. You, you you have to have skills. Money is fine, but you have to have skills also. Okay. I say all that to say, all this stuff that's going on with these people, whatever it is, if you don't have a, a good grounding, then you're going to sound dumb and they don't know what, they, they just don't know what they're doing. Um, I'll give you a, a good example. Since I'm grounded in radio and we had to take phone calls, whatever have you, a lot of times you hear on YouTube where people have these things, people, people are listening to the, the, the broadcast, there's a delay. A, 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 sometimes it's five second delay, a ten second delay, it'd be a long delay. So people are listening to it on their computer, but at the same time they're trying to talk on the phone and they they get confused. And a lot of times the host who was, does, doesn't doesn't tell them right away, look, stop listening to the thing. And people get it after a while, but it takes a while for them to get used to that. Okay. Okay. I bring up all this stuff. Let's go right back around to what's happening these days. We have a bunch of unqualified people in both as journalists yeah. and, they're, and they're beholden to their, the people who made, who made them or they're beholden and then same thing with the politicians, they're beholden to certain things. What's interesting about this crop of politicians that came here, if you're not beholden to donors and, and, and the structure, you know, then they can't control you. Therefore, you have a unique skill set, you see? So you're going to do things because you come from a different point. You're going to do things that, that you might go to, if a politician brought you up, then you go to that politician for advice, and they will give you advice from their thing, and they're older than you. So your, your advice might be like 20, their advice might be 20 years dated, dated, 20 years do dated, you know what I mean? When there's your fresh idea, they'll poo-poo it, they don't know anything about it, you see? There's, I'm going to try to, there's a, a really, uh, I'm not going to get into that. Um, so anyway, so so that's what I, that, that's the point I'm trying to make. You know, if who you're beholden to, that's the point. What are your skills, and can your skills argue with the people that you're beholden to to say no? This is a better idea than what you've been doing. That is the main problem of these days with this, with, with what's happening. Because nobody's actually qualified. Nobody really has. Very few, I should say that. Very few people have the skills to do what they do. I'm talking about politicians as well as media, and there's a catastrophic situation because you have a bunch of uninformed, uh, let me say it this way, stupid people controlling the, pop, the, the, the political sphere as well as the, the media sphere. So what are you going to come up with? Nothing. It's terrible. Okay. Okay, so I wanted to tell you all that. Oh, by the way, uh, 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 Ron had, had passed, you know, Peace and blessings on, on, on Ron's eternal soul. I mean, I really, we had a, we had a really, we were an amazing, amazing team. So just need to say all that. Anything else? Anything else? No, just need to know that. So that's it. 
for me, T, for the Patterson's taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect from ADES of the ADOS, American descendant of chattel slavery.